Song Ri was 16 when he died, killed by a bomb. He was his mother's favorite, a good student and an obedient son. His death was nearly 20 years ago, but for her, the grief is still raw. He was playing with other children in the forest when he stepped on the bomb. His body was blown to pieces. Some parts were found on the trees and some on the ground. Song Ri had stepped on a bomb, dropped by the US military during the Vietnam War. At least 200,000 people were killed here, and huge swathes of farmland in eastern Cambodia were destroyed. Hun Son remembers the day he and his family ran for their lives. One morning in 1971, I saw a US plane shooting smoke in the sky over my village. I knew it was a sign that there would be bombing soon. I gathered my family, we got on the ox cart and we fled as quickly as we could. But to this day, Cambodia is still paying the price of the US bombing campaign. Staff from the Cambodian Mine Action Centre carry out the painstaking and deliberate work of identifying and destroying unexploded bombs. But the devices still manage to kill and injure dozens of people every year. Lack of funding has meant Cambodia hasn't been able to carry out a comprehensive survey, so no one really knows how many unexploded bombs there are left or how long it would take to rid the country of them. With farmland destroyed by the bombs, the U.S. had lent money to the Cambodian government, mostly for food aid. That debt has now nearly doubled to $500 million. Cambodia says it shouldn't have to repay what it calls blood-stained money. A U.S. State Department official told Al Jazeera that the Cambodian government has acknowledged this debt in the past. We lack the legal authority to write off debts for countries that are able but unwilling to pay. But some analysts say there's no moral obligation to repay the debt. Regardless of Cambodia's capacity, which I still think they, they do not have that capacity, but even if they do have that capacity, uh, they shouldn't be asked to pay, repay a, debt, a dirty debt that was actually a result of, of a war that Cambodia did not choose to be involved in. For On Sun, no amount of money can bring her son back. But she says it's the US who should be paying her family for the grief they've had to endure. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera, Kampong Cham Province, Cambodia.